Life is about constant evolution. Always better today than we were yesterday. Welcome to the Only Easy Day Was Yesterday, the official Navy SEAL podcast. I'm your host, Scott Williams, and with me today is Andrew Dow, who is a retired SEAL and runs the SEAL Officer Assessment and Selection Program at Naval Special Warfare, and also Mr. Rod Olson. Well, let me tell you a little bit about Mr. Rod Olson, because he has quite a background. He is the CEO of Coaches of Excellence Institute and Coach O Consulting Group. Known as a coach's coach, Mr. Rod Olson is an author of three books and specialist on 21st century coaching and leadership. Following a 17-year football coaching career that included coaching positions at Oklahoma State University and three-time national champion Appalachian State University, Rod has spent the last decade training and coaching leaders from Fortune 100 companies to the Dallas Stars of the National Hockey League and Texas Rangers of Major League Baseball. Currently, Rod mentors and coaches major commanders in the NSW community, which is part of what we'll talk about today, and also trains both SEAL and SWIC instructors quarterly at Naval Special Warfare. You can learn more about Rod at uh, www.coachoconsultinggroup.org. Welcome, Mr. Olson. How are you doing today? Hey, good to see you guys. How are you doing, Scott? And uh, it's an honor to be with you guys. Thank you. Thank you. So, you know, I was taking a look um, at your background, and of course, um, I had heard about you and and your work at NSW. What we're going to talk about today is what you do at Naval Special Warfare, how it impacts um, how our leaders think here, and maybe some takeaways for the candidates that are thinking about coming into Naval Special Warfare, either as a SEAL officer or as a SEAL operator uh, or SWIC operator. and the first question I have for you is simply, how did you become involved with Naval Special Warfare? Yeah, no, it's a, it's a great question. And uh, the genesis of, of kind of my arrival in here is, is pretty unique. Um, when I was working with the Pittsburgh Pirates, um, one of the things that uh, we were fortunate to have was an owner that wasn't willing to spend a lot of money. So, so what we had <laughs> is we had to focus, uh, we had to really focus on development. And so uh, Kyle Stark, uh, Neil Huntington, the GM, assistant GM, uh, what they would do is uh, we, we actually, I was hired to work with them to do coaches development, uh, to help their coaches be the best they could be technically, tactically, uh, schematically, and then also personally and professionally and emotionally and spiritually, the whole deal. And uh, what ended up happening is we started having think tanks where we would bring in people from all over the world, quite frankly, that were experts on human performance, uh, also especially on development of human performance. And uh, we'd bring in everything from, uh, you know, uh, SEALs to, to NSW, to national championship coaches, to sports psychologists, and uh, just a ton of different people. Well, one of those people happened to be uh, Gary Denham. And uh, Gary Denham used to run the IQC course. He's a retired Navy SEAL. Uh, he's a dev group guy also for a long time. Uh, you can be praying for Gary. He's uh, battling stage four cancer, but he's doing great. Yeah. And um, But uh, Gary uh, also brought with him a, a young man named Keith Davids, who at that time happened to be the commander of BTC. And uh, Keith and I spent a little time uh, at the think tank. Uh, and uh, Keith came to me and said, um, man, I, I really, you know, once he found out what he did, he said, man, I, I think my guys would relate to you. And I think our guys would uh, would really benefit from giving, giving them more coaching tools. And he said, what do you think about training our instructors? And so uh, I came out, uh, we did some some kind of test classes and test courses. The guys seemed to like it. And uh, one thing led to another. And that was roughly, geez, you know, Scott and Andrew, that was, that was roughly almost 10 years ago, a little over nine wow. years ago. And so since then, we, I've been training instructors quarterly um, and uh, at, at all different phases. In fact, I'm out here in Virginia Beach. Uh, we're actually doing our first Virginia Beach instructor training. We're, we're at Advanced Training Command. Uh, so we're working with these guys a little bit. And it's just fantastic. But uh, great honor, great privilege. But um, I seem to relate to the guys. Uh, the other neat thing that happened, uh, quite frankly, after about roughly three or four years, um, uh, Admiral Davids came to me again uh, and said, hey, you know, I, I don't think there's a lot for our major commanders. Um, and we, when I've talked to some other guys and, and, you know, I know you do a lot of executive coaching, Rod, and would you be willing to work with some of our major commanders uh, if they're open to it, where you coach them on a monthly basis for, for nine to 10 months and 
and help them again, personally, professionally, and, and anything they need. And um, he said, you know, you know enough about our community uh, that that you 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 have good good um, good just core knowledge of what our guys deal with. But at the same time, you're not in it, and that's that's a benefit, right? Because because I don't I don't have a dog in the hunt other than I just want to help guys be the best they can and help with their families and professionally. But but also, I, you know, I know enough about the community that that I can be helpful uh, and familiar mm-hmm. with. So so that happened. And then last thing, and I'll shut up here. Um, the last thing that happened was roughly about three years ago uh, with Andrew is very familiar with this. Um, uh, they came to me when they were just in the infant stages of, of the NLAP program with the Navy leadership assessment process. And, and they said, Hey, we've heard a lot of good things and, and we'd love to get our guys some coaching. You know, what do you think would be the best way to get them some coaching during the NLAP week? And, and so we arrived at a deal where um, I've been, geez, I don't know how many NLAPs I've done now, dozens. And um and fortunate to be a part of that, even at the inception, and even to today, uh, where I work with Ken Mara and all those guys, and and I, I teach for a couple of hours on leadership, and then I meet with every candidate uh, as they roll through uh, in a one-on-one. So fortunate to be a, 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 a doing quite a bit in NSW, but at the same time in different facets, which is kind of unique. And and so yeah, just a huge blessing, and and uh, that's the genesis and where we are today. Yeah, just to bring uh, folks up to speed, uh, Keith Davids is now Rear Admiral Keith Davids of Naval Special Warfare Command. He's leading our community. And NLAP is the Navy Leadership Assessment Program, which is a program that's um, tailored to assessing and selecting our next generation of leaders within NSW. Now, Rod, you have a wide variety of clients. Um, They're everything from uh, business sector professionals, uh, educators, parents, government. When you look at Naval Special Warfare, which is definitely its its own special group of people, um, how do you tailor your training to this group of professionals? Yeah, it's another good, another very good question. But uh, you know, as we look at at leadership as a whole, um, you know, I've got a saying: I, I don't believe there's anything new under the sun. All right, you know, um, and Andrew can attest to this. He's been in a yeah. lot of great rooms with a lot of great people, and and uh, at the end of the day, you know, people are always begging for new things and everything else. And what we talk about, whether it's business, sport, or military, is the fact that man, you know what you got to do? You got to drill down on knowing who you are and what you believe in. And, and core values and core principles of leadership, um, those are those are vital, vital principles. And you know things such as being a simple person in a complex world and, and having the ability to distill and simplify complex issues and then really create ownership in people, which I believe you know NSW and the SEAL community has been, that's why we came to them in the first place of, hey, how can we do a better job with athletes and, and getting them to take ownership in the 21st century? And you know, for a long time, my niche was how to coach and lead the 21st century athlete or employee and how it's different and everything else. Well, the reality is, you know, um, seems like business leaders want to hear from, from uh, all the, all the special forces and Navy SEALs and they read all their stuff. And, 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 and then the SEALs, they want to talk to sports people and, and everybody else. So it's all cross pollination, Scott, quite frankly. And, and my job is to help cross pollinate all those core principles and really quite frankly, give people a structure that, is is um, very strategic and, and very intentional in scope, both for at work and at home, but at the same time gives them the freedom to, to instill their own personalities and, and their own, um, you know, like commander's intent. You know, man, er- everybody has a different job, but the ability to have a structure on how to treat people, how to value people, and then how to get the most out of people. You know, a coach's job is to take an individual or a team to a level they can't get to by themselves. And so one of the principles that I teach is Quit being a commander, quit being a manager, quit being a CEO, and start being a coach. Think like a coach. Um, And at the end of the day, titles are important, but taking care of your people and getting them to another level is what it's really all about. No, that's actually, Rod, that's great points. And I'm actually jotting down some notes here because, you know, I'm always a learner, right? We're always learning. Everything we do, we try to be a, um, to learn something new every day in my point of view. But within, 
it's interesting how you say it. We are all cross pollinated, and we're doing your vision on how you approach um, different leadership aspects, whether it's sports, athletes, military, business. Um, something I'd like to try to aim at, if you're if you're willing, is to kind of. So as you know, I'm the SOAS program manager, and we do SEAL officer assess, assessment and selection. So we are looking at the next generation of SEAL officers who will be coming to uh, hopefully earn a right to be invited to BUDS, be selected for uh, SEAL training. Uh, what we do is every year we get about 200 candidates from Naval Academy, different accession sources, Naval Academy, ROTC, OCS, lateral transfers. And something I would love for them to take away from this short little podcast discussion is maybe some some guidelines that you can put out there for them to understand or pre better prepare themselves on expectations on going into the military community, going into the SEAL community, some things that they could work on and take home with them and practice and utilize in their day to day that will, you know, maybe make them better, make, even if it's just one little tidbit that can make them a better person and a better leader for the community in which they'll serve under. Um, does that make sense? Is that, that kind of yeah, accurate? Absolutely. No, absolutely. And, and let me give you something simple that, that I did as a head coach. Um, and, and I still teach today. I just taught it yesterday. Um, and, and, you know, when I met with my teams, um, you know, uh, I, I always told them three things. And I did this with my own children, too. So, you know, and it works across the board. And a lot of the guys I train use it as commanders. They use it as, as CEOs. And, and I used to come in front of my team. And you'll appreciate this, Andrew. But I'd walk in front of them and I'd say, hey, you know what? I play favorites, man. And if you want to be my favorite, you need to do three things in this program. Number one, you better control your controllables. And your biggest controllables are your attitude and your effort, man. And I'm telling those guys that are coming in that you're talking to and if they're watching this, dude, I'm telling you, you want to separate yourself from everybody else? Have a freaking good attitude, man. Have, have an attitude that, that you know, when I was at Oklahoma State, our walk-ons used to write YCBM, the letters YCBM on their arm and their tape everywhere. And it stood for, you can't break me, man. You can do whatever you want to me, but I'm, I'm here. I'm going to make it. I'm going to find a way. And an attitude, I'm going to have a smile on my face. I'm going to work my ass off, you know, and, and at the end of the day, and I think attitude and effort are massive, regardless of whatever you do. And, you know, it's all about excellence and aiming for perfection, right? You know, and how you do anything is how you do everything. So I would tell these candidates right now, you know, it's not as, as you know, this, if you're a world-class warfighter, man, you know, and this is what we talk about. You're going to be trying to be world-class in everything. You're going to want to be a world-class instructor. You want to be a world-class father and a world-class husband. And that's freaking hard to do, man. But if you can control your controllables and let go of the uncontrollables, don't worry about the things you can't control, man. And, you know, Davo Sweeney at Clemson, the head football coach, talks about if you can't let go of your uncontrollables, they're going to end up controlling you. And so as these guys come in, you know, just work on your controllables. The second thing I told them if they wanted to be my favorite is you better have a mistake plan, man. And, and, and we taught this to our children. It's, it's very applicable and it's very simple, but man, it is powerful. And it's this, simply this. There's only three things you can do when you make a mistake, brother. Admit it, fix it, and don't repeat it. Man, and, and admit it means take ownership. Don't blame anybody else. We live in a world right now where everybody's telling you to figure out your own truth and there's there's no right and wrong. And, and you know, and, and if you make a mistake, it's somebody else's fault. Don't worry about it. You know, it's like, no, dude, you got to own it. So you got to admit it. And then the next thing is fix it. And that's usually a technical fix. Like you missed something on the checklist, man. Even with pro athletes, you know, if they're struggling or something like that, they probably are just missing something, whether it's the mental game, the physical game, the emotional, it's just a checklist. It's like when you're in the teams, Andrew, you know, hey, you make a mistake. It's like, well, you go back through your, 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 your steps, man. What did I miss? So again, admit mm -hmm. it, fix it, and don't repeat it or flush it, right? And move on. Have a short-term memory when it comes to mistakes, but learn. Learn, learn, learn. And then, and then the last thing, you know, and don't, and by the way, don't let those mistakes freaking keep you from being who or where you want to be. You know, just mm -hmm. learn from it and keep moving because mistakes is how we learn. Third thing, if you want to be a favorite for in my world, man, you gotta be a we guy, not a me guy, man. You gotta be selfless and you gotta be a team guy. You have gotta, you have gotta want to have the team come first. And and you know, in today's world, uh, again, we live in a world that says it's all about you, man. And and you know. The SEALs uh, and, and this environment, man, if you're looking for a team, if you're looking to be around dudes that, that, that you know, it's about us, not about me. And, and my brother next to me is, is what this is all about. You know, man, bro, I miss it so much from football. That's what I miss, man. I, I miss the mm -hmm. locker room. I miss, I miss the teams. And, and, you know, and I'm fortunate that I still get to be a part of this. And, 
and and I'm around you guys that are team guys, and 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 I feel like NSW is a team, and 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 to me. That's it, man. Control your controllables. Have a mistake plan that you live by. And then be a we guy, not a me guy, man. Be a start part of something special that's unique, that that involves a team, not just individuals, man. You know, I, I get the whole Xbox deal. It's great. It's wonderful. But, man, how about getting on a team, bro? A team of guys that's doing something unique and special that nobody in the world's doing. That's what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. That's motivation right there. Like, those are, those are three great points. And what's so funny is to hear – like an expert like yourself, be able to talk on this. It's like, these are things I, I know I've heard and I, I utilize. And just having you paint that picture make, clears things up so much. So I really hope that uh, guys and gals that we come to have at least just to sew eyes or do anything in life, just follow those three simple things. That's incredible, Ron. Awesome. Uh, wow. and hey, you know, we, you, you, know yeah. you, just, you said something really powerful, Andrew. Yeah, I've heard these before. That's exactly right. You know, but we forget, mm-hmm. we forget, yeah. or we, we, we just kind of get caught up in, and we're drinking the Kool-Aid, right? That everybody's drinking. And you know what, dude, there aren't many guys out there with a trident, man. And, and, and if you want to be one of those people, man, I mean, there's nothing else like it. And I've never been an operator. I'm not a seal, but I'm telling you as close as, as close as I've been to this community, man, it is unique and, and it's a special bond. And, and if you're one of them, Woo, change your life, brother. It will change your it life. Has. Right? It really has. And, you know, I grew up playing sports and sports teams, and I just knew I just loved that environment because you're all striving for the same goal is to win and become better and to, you know, try to leave your name to where people remember, like, okay, you accomplished what you set yourself out to do. And that's what draw me to the the, the teams, right? It's called the teams, which – Right. Most individuals who come to it are used to that. So I think that was an upper hand to have. And it was, it, yeah, I look back and I just, I miss it every day. And it's just something, you know, I'm so thankful to be able to part part of this, but to pass forward what you're, you're, you're teaching right now and reminding us of is very, it's very special. And I appreciate that, Rod. Scott? Yeah, I think it's uh, really so important that, um, we bring in these outside perspectives from Naval Special Warfare um, to to do that kind of teaching. Um, We can get caught in an echo chamber um, Mm -hmm. where we kind of listen to each other and, 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 uh, and and that I think stunts growth, bringing in someone like uh, Rod to, to kind of go over the tried and true principles of leadership and helping us understand each other um, and figuring out new ways um, to to progress, um, to not just be leaders, but to be teammates and to help, um, you know, be better humans, I think is fundamental to being better operators. Absolutely. And, and Scott, you know, we've got a saying, uh, and with the tribes and the people I run with, man, if you're jacked up at home, you'll be jacked up at work eventually. And if you're jacked up at work, eventually it'll get you at home. And and so th- what I help people do and, and what I think that NSW is really working towards, too, is valuing the people at a high level, you know, because the suicide rates and everything else right now that we're dealing with after all the combat and everything else is is just, you know, it's and it's not just NSW, right? It's 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 worldwide. And, and to, to, to get back to really valuing people, developing people, um, teammates that are going to keep your hold, have your back and, and, and take care of you. And at the same time, in all this, you know, um, at the end of the day, we've got to make sure we don't assume resilience, but we are developing the best warfighters in the world for a cause, you know, not just to get a trident. This is this is to keep our country, you know, to be the greatest country in the world at the end of the day. And so it's a calling too. It's not just a gig. It's not just a trident, you know? Yeah, I agree. Rod, we've got just a few minutes left. I want you to think about this for a second and let us know to our audience members out there, to the kid who's in high school right now, who's thinking about becoming um, a Navy SEAL or a SWIC someday or a SEAL officer. What are the things that they can start working on now to sort of condition themselves uh, to become future members of this community from your perspective? Yeah, well, and again, I appreciate you asking the question, but I think, you know, guys like Andrew and, and people that are in the teams would have a way better perspective than I. 
Um, but I, I appreciate the question and I'll honor it, you know, as best I can here. Um, my oldest son um, is a mental conditioning coordinator in pro baseball for a team uh, that I won't name, but uh, he spends a lot of time with, with the 18 year olds the, to the 22 year olds, right. In the minor league system. And, he and I talk an awful lot and, and, you know, and he's a lot smarter than I am. He's got a PhD and I've just got a PE degree, but he's, he's, he's <laughs> seeing some things that he and I both are seeing. And that is, it's sad. You know, we're seeing a lot of young men um, and people that, that uh, they, they, it's all about them individually. And, and it's all about them finding their truth and, and, and they're not relying on team members. And one of the reasons I think football and, and games like that are, are you have to re, you rely on your teammates, man. And that makes you a different human, you know, and it makes you a better human because I can't do it by myself. I have to have something. I'm not slamming individual sports or whatever, but I, I'm just saying that, you know, the biggest thing they can do right now to separate themselves is number one, play team sports. You know, and 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 track is not a team sport. I mean, you're on a team, but it's like unless you're doing the relay, right? You you need to be a part of and 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 find ways to put yourself in situations where you have to rely on other people, but more importantly, they have to rely on you. And and even jobs, go work jobs where people have to rely on you. That's going to get you ready to be a great teammate in the teams. You know, and hey, you got to take care of your own stuff, right? You got to control your controllables ownership of what you got to do. You got to do your job, but at the same time, man, be, learn how to be a great teammate. Put yourself in situations where you have to rely on other people and they have to rely on you. It's not just about watching YouTube videos and going to Enzo and getting ready. You know what I mean? It's, you, you got to understand that, that, you know, the guys that I talked to, Scott, um, you know, and Andrew, that, that, have been in this, you know, people like, you know, Admiral Mark Schaefer and, and Rear Admiral Keith Davis mm -hmm. and, and, and all these guys that I've seen move up now, you know, and, and they were around when there wasn't as much war right back in the day. And, and, and then the Trident and, and being on the teams was, oh, it meant so much. Right. And it still does, but we got to shift our focus from me, me, me to us, us, us. So I would challenge those kids. You want to separate yourself and take yourself as a man and a human to a whole nother level as a person, start thinking team, team, team. And, and I, and how can I help the team? Right. It's the old JFK thing. It's not what your country can do for you. It's what you can do for your country. All that stuff, man. Sorry. I get on a soapbox, but I get excited because I love what the seals stand for, man. I just love it. Well, Rod, that, uh, that's some great wisdom. I, I know that it took me um, sometime well into my, 20s before I realized that the wisdom of my parents um, was was actually true and they actually knew things and uh, maybe I was a little <laughs> too hot-headed and not paying attention but wisdom goes a long way we appreciate yours today thank you for joining us absolutely um, Andrew also thank you for jumping in here with me and uh, Thanks, providing Scott. your perspective um, that's going to do it for this time. Um, I'm Scott Williams, the host of The Only Easy Day Was Yesterday, the official Navy SEAL podcast. Uh, we hope you enjoyed today's episode, and we look forward to uh, having you listen again the next time. Thank you, gentlemen. Thanks, Scott. Take care. Thanks, Andrew. Thanks Scott. Thanks, Ron. There is nowhere to hide in hell with gents. If you've been skating through a bus so far, you are not